after the completion of Easter, by celebrating Pentecost, the church will celebrate three solemnities. And today is one of them, the solemnity of Holy Trinity. Next Sunday we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus. And the Friday after the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Today, the mystery of the Holy Trinity indicate for us the purpose and the destination of who we are. As Christians, they are people. We are wrapped in the mystery of the Holy Trinity. In the first reading today, Moses, prior to his departure, he called his people and he gave them instruction. And he made them remember the past, what God has done for them even in front of obstacles, how with a powerful arm God delivered them from any enemy to know to bring them now to the promised land. And that's why he said to no other nation God ever did this because you are called the chosen ones, the one that God chosen to be his own. And the responsorial psalm today is really the theme of this liturgy. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Because we are the people that by faith in the word of Jesus, who comes to give us the truth, we believe that he is not only to bring us the truth, but he is the truth himself by which the Father has sent him in the world for that reason, to bring us the truth, so that by the truth we can be saved. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. And whoever believes in the son, the son who comes in the flesh, it is very important to believe that, that God, the son, become one of us. So that by his life, by his death, by his resurrection, and by his ascension into heaven at the right hand of the Father, he continued to give us the Paschal mystery that Paschal mystery that he accomplished, so that each one of us, as we immerse in that mystery, we continue not only to accept who we are, but we really strengthen ourselves in that relationship with God. We see in a very special way that Jesus today calling the apostles to the mountain from where he is going to ascend into heaven. And that's why the word that Matthew put to us they worship, but they doubt it, because they are not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Remember that the 40 days of Jesus after the resurrection, there was always the doubt. Is this he or not? Is this the one that really has been put to the cross, or he is not? And because of this, we see a lot of inter in, in, uh, interaction there, either by Thomas or by the apostles at the, sh at the shore of Tiberias, and today they doubt it because the Holy Spirit was not there. But what was the instruction of Jesus? Now that I was sent by the Father, I now send you. So the commission becomes. So Jesus from that mountain, he commissioned the church. As I have taught you, so you must teach others. And those who believe, you must give them the adoption to be children of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And dear people, that is the mission of the church in a nutshell. There is no other things but that the mystery of the church is a mystery of a mission, a mission that was given to them by the Lord. And because that mission is so urgent, the church from time to time, from season to others, from even age to another age, she constantly called people by the waters of baptism and send them so that they continue the commission of Jesus to bring others to know the mystery of what is our destination is and our call. Today we hear the Apostle Paul speak to us in a very special way as he speaks to the Romans. By the Spirit of God that is within us, we are able to call God our Father. The Spirit of God dwell within us. And if the Spirit of God dwell within us, 
because now by the merits of the passion and death of Christ we were reconciled and also become adopted children of God if we are children we are also heirs heirs of what of our destination heir of the kingdom we now not only become children but now also we have a purpose that we who are now are children and call God like Jesus taught us to call him our father we too are heirs of what he prepared for those who love him for those who obey his commands my dear people the blessed trinity is very intrinsic in the in the life of Christians and that's why we see that the sign of the cross is the sign when we commit ourselves in the belief of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How many times, you know, we see people do the sign of the cross sometimes, although they are unconscious of what they are doing, but sometimes it's not very reverent. The sign of the cross remember, remind us of those mysteries, that God enter into our life and that God save us. And because of that incarnation and redemption, we now are united together in a mission to continue to proclaim this mystery to the whole world for salvation. My dear people, many times this mystery is beyond our minds as human. But I love the theory of St. Augustine, that he speaks to us that God is love. He takes it from John the Evangelist, that God is love. And because he loves so much, from all eternity he generates his son. And that's why we say in the creed that he is uh, co-generated with the Father from all eternity. And the love between the Father and the Son, there is this, the, the, Holy, the God, the Holy Spirit. My dear people, there are many different things that we can, you know, try as humans to try to understand, but fully we not understand this mystery. We have the story of St. Patrick who give us the shamrock, although there are three leaves, but there is one stem. There is also the story of the apple, that although have skin, the, the meat of the apple and the cork, it comes one. We have the story of the water, that although the water is boiled or the water is ice, is still, or liquid is still water. But these are nothing compared to understand the mystery of the Trinity. The mystery of the Trinity is so part of our lives that we begin our journey in our faith by this mystery when the priest or deacon at the fount of our baptism he invoked the Holy Trinity so that in that name we are baptized. In that name we become children. In that name we have the privilege to be children of God and heirs of the kingdom. And through our entire life the church will come to us to minister and renew in us the mystery of Christ's passion and death. We call it the Paschal mystery. And every time we encounter the mystery of Christ, we encounter it in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. When we speak about the Trinity, although it is one divine God, there is three equal persons. And this was revealed to us by Jesus. It's not something that we invent. If Jesus said to us, it's better for you I go because the Father and I will send you the Holy Spirit. Here, Jesus is speaking not only the accomplishment of the incarnation and the redemption was done by the three persons, but now the three persons are going to act to continue the truth that the Father has sent to us through his son to continue and be the proclamation of the church. Me and the Father, we are one. The Father and I, we are one. And that's why he said, this oneness that I am with the Father, I pray that you will be one. And how are we going to be one? By the Holy Paraclet he is going to send to unite the church. Many times, you know, we see the aid of the Holy Spirit that for over 2,000 years, has continued to unite the church in all her diversity, in all her different people that are claimed to be part of the church, that we are one. One is the 
intention of Christ to form his church and one is the church that the Holy Spirit continues to unite to be. When we speak about the Holy Trinity, we speak about our identity because we belong to the Trinity. We belong to the Trinity because we are adopted children of the Blessed Trinity. And we too have our destination, that where God is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one day we are going to arrive. A few moments from now, I am going to ask you to recite the Creed. And what is the Creed? is a profession in the Blessed Trinity. The Father who creates, the Son who redeemed, and the Spirit who sanctified. And this is what the Church constantly do at the Mass. The Mass is a prayer to the Father through the intercession of the mystery of Christ, the Paschal mystery of Christ, the dying and rising. But we come also in this prayer to that unity that the Holy Spirit is among us, to unite us to continue to profess one God, one Lord and Father of all. My dear people, this is what we say at every celebration of the Eucharist, at every prayer we, we invoke, at every devotion we have. Why? Because the mystery of the Trinity is really the focus, is really the, the center of our faith. My dear people, have the great devotion to these mysteries. And when you make the sign of the cross, when you say the glory be, remember that you are revealing and you are honoring the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And so by your reverence, not only physically, but internally, you continue to believe that God the Father is God, that God the Son is God, that God the Holy Spirit is God. God is love, the Father is love, the Son is love, the Holy Spirit is love. And if we remain in that love, as St. Paul said, then we come to experience God. Because God is love. As we call this celebration of the Mass, we ask that as we listen to the prayers of the Church during the celebration of the Eucharist, whether it is in the, in the opening prayer, we call it the Collector, or the post-communion, the prayer after communion, and even the prayer over the gifts, especially the preface and the Eucharistic prayer, is a prayer addressed to the Father, addressed to the Father through the merits of Christ, passion and death, through the unity that we are continuing to be, proclaiming the truth through the unity of the Holy Spirit. And together I ask you in a very special way today to say with me, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.